fans. Dave Justice leaves the yard in a hurry. 34th on the year. A two-run homer. The Braves went up 4 to nothing in the fourth. In the fifth, Jeff Blauser. You don't stop Jeff Blauser. I don't even think you contain him. Otis Nixon will come around to score on the triple by Blauser. 5-2 Braves. Blauser 3 for 4. Two runs scored. 8 for 11 in the series. Also running for mayor. 6-2 Braves. Same inning. Fred McGriff, the base hit. Gant will go to third. Glenn Allen Hill, a bad throw. Gant will score as it trickles away. McGriff goes to second. 7-2 Braves and a little message for the Giants in Florida. The Braves win it by the final of 8-2. Justice is now homered in five straight. This is Major League debut. Bottom of the first, the comebacker from Brett Barbary. And he catches Chuck Carr sleeping. And he hung him out to dry. Torres will eventually make the out. In the third, 1-0 Giants. Gone. Todd Benzinger filling in for Will Clark. Off Chris Hammond, 4 0 Giants. Then in the sixth, 6 2 Giants. Robbie Thompson has done it again. Sixth home run in the last eight games. Torres had good stuff today. Just ask Jeff Conine. He gets the win. Conine again, hovering around 300, trying to stay there. Frozen. One of six K's on the day. Saying, who is this guy? 21 year old Solomon Torres. Six K's gets Conine twice. And uh, more importantly, San Francisco gets the win. Edge in the East. Bottom of the second, two on for Mickey Morandini against Tim Pugh. And Morandini, the drive. And that's a drive. Danny Jackson and Lynn Dykstra score 4 0 Phils. Morandini, four RBIs in this game. Bottom of the fifth, it was 8 0 Phils. Here comes the wildness. Dykstra at bat takes Johnny Ruffin deep. Now watch Tim Costo. He will try. I think he can call it that, but he can't make the play. Kevin Stocker will score easily from second. Here's Dykstra heading to third. Second baseman Jacob Brumfield, who started the game at center, uncorks the ball off the screen. Dykstra heading home, but look at Chip Branson. What a throw. No chance for Dykstra at home. Dorset applying the tag. Phillies, by the way, did win this game 12 0. And the play did go 8 4 5 2 if you're scoring at home, and I know you are. Phil's pound out 17 hits to support Danny Jackson. Jackson hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in his last eight starts. Cardinals in Los Angeles. Alan Watson coming off an eight run pummeling by the pods. Corey Snyder seems to continue by connecting on this pitch, going deep. But look at Ray Langford catching up with this. The great catch, but he slams his left shoulder against the wall. Langford left the game a bruised left shoulder. He's day to day. No catcher has ever hit 30 home runs in his rookie year. Well, Mike Piazza sure has a great chance taking Watson deep for his 26th of the year. That wasn't the only homer Piazza hit in this game. He had two on the day, and you know that pleases Tommy. Dodgers win it by 5-8-3. With his two dingers, Mike Piazza broke the Dodgers club rookie record for home runs. The previous mark set back in 1929 by Dell Bissonette. The Dodgers' other big hitter, Oral Hershiser, had an RBI double. He's now hitting 424. Astros in Montreal. That's where Canadian native Larry Walker, the league leader in assists, was looking for his 13th in a scoreless game in the fifth. Swindell with a single to right off Ken Hill. Andohar Cedeno tries to score from second, but wait a minute. This is lucky 13 for Mr. Walker. Bottom of the fifth, two on for Marquise Grissom. And Grissom hits a two-out full count pitch by Greg Swindell for his 14th home run of the year. 3-0 Expos. Grissom, part of an Expo outfield that leads the league in RBI. They hang on to win it 3-2. John Wetland got in and out of trouble for his 31st save. Ken Hill pumped for Brett Boone facing the sometimes shaky Todd Stottlemyre. And Boone goes deep. Check out Devon White. He thinks he has a shot at the Boone shot. He doesn't. one nothing Mariners. Top of the third, Blue Jays with a barrage of singles off Eric Hansen. It was Hansen who was shaky. First Darnell Colson, Ed Sprague, and then Randy Noor. The bases are loaded for Roberto Alomar. Revenge time for Roberto. He had a double play his first time up. The second time going the opposite way for his first ever Grand Slam home run. It put the Jays up 4-1. to one. As for Stottlemyre, he settled down. Just ask Dave Magadan. He took a long look at the big hook. Six strikeouts, eight strong innings for Stottlemyre. Blue Jays go on to win at 6-2. For Joe Carter, he's now driven in at least 100 runs now in five straight seasons. That's entertaining the Twins, and Frank goes right to work against Eddie Godardo. Thomas, all of this one. What a shot. It's 36 home run of the year with a man on. That's 108 RBIs for the big guy. 2-0 White Sox. Sox back for more. Two on for Mr. Robin Ventura in the third. And Ventura doing the job down the right field line. Ellis Burke scores. Here comes Bo Jackson charging home. And Bo slides in safely. 6-0 Sox. Ozzie Guillen doing his imitation, I guess, of Bo's running style. 
I said it, Bo. He did it. 13 to 5. White Sox the final. Thomas, two hits, three RBI. He now has 109 RBIs. That's Jose Lean getting a shower. Top of the second, no score. Royals and Red Sox. David Cohn losing the battle here to Mo Vaughn. Vaughn is 21st home run. Sox up by one. Still top two. Cohn a bit wild. His 14th wild pitch of the year past Mike McFarland. Scott Cooper makes it 2-0 Sox. It was 2-1 Boston when Danny Darwin has control problems. We're tied at two. Big day for George Brett. He not only had four hits, he had his 200th career stolen base. Bottom of the six, Sox up by 1-4-3. That lead didn't last. Kevin McReynolds going deep for the ninth time this year, taking Darwin around the foul pole. On to extra innings where Greg Gagne, 0 for 27 against Boston this year, breaks the slump against John Dobson, scoring Wally Joyner with a game-winning hit. Butch Hobson had Dobson intentionally walk Kevin McReynolds to get to Gagne, who didn't even start this game. He was inserted for defensive purposes. Cecil at first. Cecil has never stolen a base in his big league career. Cecil still hasn't stolen a base in his big league career. Bottom of the third, still scoreless. John Doherty for the Tigers. Craig Paquette. And Kirk Gibson shades down. Runs out of real estate. one nothing A. Still in the third, Mike Bordick at the plate. Lou Whitaker doesn't make too many mistakes. Lou did today. The error, Scott Brocious scores 2 nothing A's. Bottom of the fourth, 5 nothing A's. Bill Kruger on the mound. Bordick hitting into the potential double play, but Whitaker's second error of the day allowed Brocious to score again. A's pick up the victory by the final of 7 to 3. As Tony LaRussa said afterwards, you don't want to make it a habit of trying to pick up victories living off Lou Whitaker errors. They just don't happen. The A's stopping their longest loop. Gone. It was scoreless in the bottom of the second until Cal leaves the yard. 23rd on the year. 1 nothing O's. Tough at bat for David Segui against Matt Whiteside and fouled it off his foot. Same at bat. Fouled it off his foot. Same at bat. Another one. So what's he do? He flies out. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh yeah, I can laugh. Meanwhile, Jamie Moyer putting the hurt on Juan Gonzalez gets him with the whiff. Digger Phelps' son-in-law, very impressive. Not Juan, Jamie. Gonzalez, who had hit three homers the night before, could not solve Jamie Moyer. Baltimore ends its four-game losing streak. Moyer, the first Baltimore left-hander to win ten games since Jeff Ballard won. Plantier has shown the power and potential to lead the league in homers. Plantier patting his numbers against Milt Mays Pirates here in the third. That's Plantier. A three-run homer. Ricky Gutierrez and Tony Gwynn will score. Milt May filling in for the suspended Jim Leland. 4-1 Padres. Plantier in the field. Bottom half of the third. Dave Clark takes Andy Ashby deep. And Phil has problems judging this one. Jay Bell scores. Pirates go on to win it by the final of 7-4. Bob Walk ending a four-game losing streak. His first win in a month. He is appealing his five-game suspension. Game two, the Bucks and the Pods. Guess who did it again? Plantier. Another three-run homer, seven RBIs in the doubleheader. He has 14 homers in the last 28 games, and since Monday has hit a grand slam and four three-run homers. The Rocks back at Shea. Lance Painter on the mound, looking for his first Major League win. Getting Jeff Kent to pop up. Freddie Benavides says, I got it, and just barely does. In the ninth, Rocks leading 5-1. Lance Painter at the plate. And he goes the other way with it. His first Major League RBI. First Major League win. First Major League complete game. The Rockies win it by the final of 6-1. to Painter just recalled from Colorado Springs. He had an ERA of 11. Sandy Almar puts Cleveland on top. The base hit. Driving in Candy Maldonado and Alvaro Espinosa. Four RBIs for Alomar. Indians eventually built a 7-2 lead, but the Yanks would come back down by three in the six. Two on, two out. Wade Boggs, the sharp grounder to Felix Fermin, throws it to Espinosa for the force, right? No, he places a tag on himself. Noakes is called safe. Espinosa can't believe the call. That would have been the third out. The inning keeps on going. Three runs come in. The game is tied for Paul O'Neill, who puts the Yanks ahead to stay with a bases-clearing double. The Yanks go on to the big comeback win and has the Tribe spinning 14-8. to eight. The 14 runs and seven doubles in this game. Season high for the Yanks. Every Yank in the starting lineup had at least a hit. Base running by Mr. Chili Davis. Top Broken of the first. Back, Eduardo Perez, the squib to Dickie Thon, and Davis plays some hip check. Hockey, look out. 2 0 Angels after one. Mark Langston 
on his game, striking out Kevin Reimer, one of seven Ks on the day. Langston wins his second straight. The Angels win it six to one. JT Snow with his 12th home run. Rene Gonzalez two for four, two RBI. For Langston, he only allowed one unearned run over six innings and wins his 14th.